welcome to biodiversity and conservation so we are continuing the next part of it now the next part ecologist and evolutionary biologist have proposed various hypotheses out of these hypotheses we are selecting the three hypotheses here the first one is speciation in is generally a function of time unlike temperate regions tropical latitudes have remained relatively undisturbed for millions of years and thus had a long evolutionary time for species diversification so this is the first hypothesis given by the ecologist now what they say is speciation meaning formation of a new species again it is the part of evolution we are going to study it in the part of the evolution speciation is nothing but formation of a new species homo sapiens is one species from us if a new species arises we call the process as speciation okay so speciation is generally a function of a time unlike temperate regions temperate temperate regions meaning cold countries tropical latitudes have remained relatively undisturbed because in the tropical areas the climatic condition is even throughout the year it is almost constant throughout the year that's why the tropical latitudes have remained relatively undisturbed that means they are not disturbed and hence species will be continuing in those regions so for millions of years and thus had a long evolutionary time for species diversification because of this environmental condition as the environmental condition is suitable for the sustenance and survival of the species the from a single species many species have been arised this is what is called as diversification of the species and uh, different species have been formed okay we call it as evolutionary tree also origin is one from which many species have been formed so how the species have been formed this is the part of a study of evolution so scientists believe in evolution and remember today we believe in the evolution because this was a given by a person who is called as a father of evolution and his name is charles darwin okay now next one second point is tropical environments unlike temperate ones are less seasonal relatively more constant and predictable this we know what what is the statement or hypothesis means here tropical environments the tropical region that means equatorial belt unlike temperate one temperate one is cold country are less seasonal that means a tropical region almost it is warm throughout the year almost it is warm throughout the year while in temperate the the temperature during summer season highest it may reach up to 10 degrees celsius, celsius only then after that during uh, the winter season as the uh, as well as the, the snowfall season the temperature will be almost in minus degrees only so that's why tropical environments have almost a same temperature throughout the year that's why we say uh, relatively more constant and predictable we know we predict what we predict this is the month of june what we predict in the month of the june yes it is the rainy season monsoon is going to arrive so wait and watch so you will be waiting for the rain rain will come this is what is called as prediction so we are predicting certainly will receive the rain okay then the third hypothesis there is more solar energy available in the tropics yes true there is more solar energy available in the tropical regions which contribute to higher productivity this is most important that's why productivity with respect to the plants plants are the producers we are consumers so plants will produce more food when they will produce more food if solar energy is there okay then what about in the tropical regions tropical regions the number of the plants is less because they also receive the solar radiations but the solar radiations which are received are less while compared to the plants which are present in the equatorial belt in the tropical regions that's why productivity is highest in the tropical regions and it is less in the temperate regions least in the polar regions because plant should survive so climatic conditions uh, should suit it so that's why tropical regions have the they receive more solar radiations and hence this tropical region it consists of uh, and it also uh, helps in production of a higher productivity in the plants okay so this is regarding the part of the hypothesis proposed by the evolutionary biologist 
so this is regarding the first part of patterns of a gradient and with this we will move on to the next part the second part second part is a species area relationship and in that species area relationship let's look at the species richness along with the area so we are coming across the second one second one is a species area relationship species area relationship this is the second part in the patterns of gradient the first one is latitudinal gradient second one is a species area relationship now this species area relationship this was given by a person called as a alexander von humboldt it was given by alexander von humboldt he is an ecologist and this ecologist he has given the species area relationship what does it determines so let's study uh, with the help of a graph in the graphical representation here we have an area this side we have the species richness so this is a uh, graph that shows a relationship between the species and area now in the species area relationship graph this is the species richness this is the area now here we find a rectangular hyperbola curve here we give an equation s equal to c a raised to z this is an equation which is given by alexander von humboldt and if it is plotted on a log scale so here it is also termed as a log scale log log scale for this also we give an equation called as a log s log s equal to log c plus z log a this is on the log scale log s is equal to log c plus z log a then what is this species area relationship shows now let us consider an area suppose if we take our locality okay let us take our college campus only our college campus is very small if it is small then the total number of species are also less because area is less okay so species means it is animal species also plant species also now if area is small species number is a small then increase the area okay let us take our entire taluka okay then area is more different species are there increase district go to uh, entire state go to entire country okay now country means it is very large huge lot many species will be there then extend it still continent continent has the highest species now what we say is here with respect to area and species richness as the area increases species richness also increases as the area increases species richness also in increase as the area decreases species richness also decreases certainly okay so increased area will increase the richness of the species as a result the graph will go straight then still extend the area still the species richness will increase and still extend the area the species richness will remain constant that means as the area increases the species richness also increases but up to a certain limit remember this up to a certain limit that's why we get a rectangular hyperbola curve what type of curve do we get in species area relationship rectangular hyperbola curve okay and it is given with an equation s equal to c a raised to z and it is plotted on the log scale also where we give an equation log s equal to log c plus z log a then what are these what is s c a and z let's see this s refers to species richness then c is a y intercept c 
C is a y intercept, A is area, and Z is a slope of line. Okay, so this Z is a slope of a line. This slope of line it is also called as a regression coefficient. Okay. Now this is regarding the species area relationship. Okay. Now uh, certain values are also there in normal areas. In normal areas, the z line. Okay. In normal areas, the z value will be around zero point one to zero point two. Then. In large areas, in large areas, say about continents, let us say continent. It is a large area. Now, in normal areas, when the z value is small, in large area, the z value will be suddenly high. It ranges from the z value lies from zero point six to one point two. Okay, that means. If the z value increases, this line becomes more steeper. Look at this. The rectangular hyperbola it becomes more steeper. Okay, if the z value increases, that means as the area increases, species richness will also increase. That's why what we say it increases, but there is a limit for the species. Though we expand the area, it doesn't mean that the species will increase continuously. So there is a limit for it. Okay, so as the area increases, the species richness will also increase. Okay, so this z value, so there is a uh, numerical number which is given for the z value in normal areas. Okay, normal areas means uh, let us take our India as a country. So in this uh, country, in normal areas, the z value will be around zero point one to zero point two, which is uh, standardly given by ecologist. And in larger areas, the z value is little bit higher. It is around zero point six to one point. Two. That means uh, in normal areas, the z line is a little bit less. The value of the z is less, and in larger areas, the value of the z is uh, more. So this is regarding the species area relationship, which is given by Alexander von Humboldt. And uh, with respect to the species area relationship, it is also given on a log scale, as uh, we say log s equal to. log c plus z log a okay if the values are given we can calculate it if we know the uh, value of a uh, yes species richness then uh, areas and uh, z line we can calculate this part also okay so this is regarding the part of species area relation ship okay let us study the z line Uh, more in elaborate way now regarding the z line the z line lies in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 as we have studied uh, regardless of a taxonomic group whether it is a plants in britain birds in california or molluscs in new york state that means uh, the z line if it is 0.1 to 0.2 as we say in normal areas uh, the z line is around 0.1 to 0.2 okay this is an estimated or calculated part by the ecologist only the z line will remain 0.1 to 0.2 in normal areas with respect to species with respect to species means it does not mean to a only one particular species now here we have given an example whether it is plant in britain so in the britain we have different species of plants the z value lies in the range Between zero point one to zero point two, or it might be birds in California. In the California, we have bird species. The bird species Z value it lies in between zero point one to zero point two only. Or molluscs in New York. Okay, molluscs shelled animals. We have different. Like apple snail is there, octopus is there. So all belongs to molluscs. If you take these species, the species number, not number, the species richness lies in the value of zero point one to zero point two. Okay, this is one thing. Next, for larger areas, as we have taken continents here, this z value it ranges between zero point six to one point two. Just we are elaborating this part here. Okay, 
so a larger area z value increases normal area normal means while compared to large it is a little bit less if it is a continent larger area the z value is, lies between 0.6 to 1.2 okay so remember these these are most important okay so these are most important points here because the value of z will be asked so what is the value of z in larger areas what is the value of z in smaller areas or normal areas okay so it is a 0.1 to 0.2 and here it is a 0.6 to 1.2 this in larger areas that means uh, this uh, rectangular hyperbola curve it gets uh, more steeper more steeper means uh, from this point it, it increases okay it becomes a uh, steep if the z value increases it becomes ins uh, instead of rectangular hyperbola it increases so that's why the z value decides uh, what type of a uh, curve do we get but generally we get uh, a rectangular hyperbola curve this curve is called as a rectangular hyperbola curve okay next one for frugivores, frugivores meaning fruit eating birds. For fruit eating birds and mammals in the tropical forest. So we are talking about the tropical forest, birds and mammals which feeds on the fruits of a different continents. Look at this, the continent is changed. We have an Asia continent, Europe continent, then American continent in this way of different continents. The slope is found to be 1.15 which is most important. What is the Z value for frugivorous birds? If this question is asked, the Z value for fruit eating birds is 1.15. So frugivorous meaning fruit eating, either it is bird or animal, we call them as a frugivorous animals. Okay, so frugivorous birds, frugivorous animals, the Z value is 1.15. So this is regarding the species area relationship as this species area relationship was given by an ecologist called as Alexander von Humboldt. He has just shown that as the area increases, the species richness also increases, but it is not unlimited. There is a limit. That's why in the nature, nothing is unlimited. For everything, we have a limit. Okay, so that is what it states. So with this, let's end up today's class and we'll continue with the more important and uh, attractive aspects of uh, biodiversity and conservation. Thank you.